my name is Nesfania, and now I will be sharing with you about supporting schemas in early years. So a schema is a pattern of behavior young children use to make sense of the world around them. There are nine play schemas, and let me share with you some ways to support your child as they explore these schemas. First is trajectory schema. Children with trajectory schema are learning how things, and including themselves, move and respond. This schema is evident when you see your child drops an object from a height, throws or knocks things over on purpose. So how do we support this schema? Well, first you can provide your child with some balls and a basket or box to throw or kick the balls in. You can put the box facing upwards for throwing or forward and on the floor for kicking. For older kids, you can step up the challenge by buying a dart game or this tech vest which you can easily find in IKEA. Next are balloons. Balloons are toddler's favorite stuff. You can teach them to keep hitting the balloon with their hand so it doesn't fall to the ground or you can just use it for throw and catch practice. Playing with bubbles by blowing, chasing, and popping them is known to improve oral motor skills visual tracking skills, and hand-eye coordination. And at the age of four or five, children can already start learning to fly a kite, while younger ones can try to fly paper planes outdoors. These activities allow children to learn the laws of aerodynamics. Sounds cool, huh? Next, we have marble run and ramps which are very helpful for kids to learn the basics of physics. They learn about speed, acceleration, and friction. Last one, climbing frames and slides, like the Spickler Triangle, which is excellent for kids to find out how their own body moves. Also, you can bring them to somewhere near an airport or seaport. If you live in Jakarta, you may want to visit the Batavia area in Pik because the airport is very close to that place. So you can see planes about to land, you can see ships near the shore, and there was also a bus and bikes. And the last time I went there, I also saw this group of people just training their Macau parrots to fly. Yeah, so that's a really great place for kids who are exploring their trajectory schema. Another idea is to watch a live sports game where they will get a chance to see how the ball flies and is passed from one player to another. Next is rotation schema. Children with rotation schema are learning about how things move, turn, and spin. So if you notice that your child is so fascinated by the sport, spinning washing machine, fan, or wheel, chances are they are exploring their rotation schema. Usually, they also like to spin around and enjoy drawing circles. To support rotation schema, we can provide them with things that can rotate, turn, roll, spin, or twist, such as toys with wheels, cylinder cans, an old tire, spinning tops. And if you have a floor fan, you can put balls on top of it and your child will enjoy seeing them move. Yeah, you can also provide nuts and bolts and even ask them to help you assemble a simple IKEA furniture. Then you can give them a scarf and ask them to make a big circle, then a small circle and turn around. Yeah, and do a little dance. Next is to use a swivel chair like the one that I'm sitting on. So you can just let your child, yeah, sit here. Then you can strap your child with a long scarf and rotate them. Move them from one room to another. And the last one is a classic rotary pencil sharpener. I used to love this one when I was a child. Yeah, there's joy in turning the handle, seeing the container getting full with the wood pieces and the pencil getting shorter. It was like magic to me. If your child likes to swim, you can bring them to a pool and make swirls on the water. Or you can also visit an amusement park and just enjoy looking at different rotating rides like Ferris wheel, carousel, and chair swing ride, or as we call it, ontang anting. Next is enveloping schema. So when a child is exploring their enveloping schema, they are learning how to make things, including themselves, disappear. They enjoy covering their body and wrapping their toys. 
So to support this schema, we can provide our child with various garments and fabrics yeah, that they can find from their closet, uh, blankets, sheets, and scarves. Another great idea is to buy a cheap emergency foil blanket. It is very cheap, shiny, reflective, and has a crinkly sound. Just a nice addition to have in the collection. Let your child use these fabrics to cover themselves or their soft toys and baby dolls. Um, make this an opportunity to do pretend play as well. Model how one should hold and comfort a baby. You can also give them nesting cups and Tupperwares of different sizes that are nice for your kids to cover on top of each other. You can also wrap toys inside aluminum foil and newspapers and then ask your child to guess what's inside and then let them unwrap each mystery item. Oh, they're gonna love this one so much. And another fun idea to try is to let your child plant seeds inside the soil or bury cotton buds inside sand and let them pretend to be archaeologists searching for fossils of dinosaurs. Yeah, and then when you visit the beach, you can ask your child to bury their feet or half of their body inside the soil and make it look disappear. Yeah, okay, now next one is containment schema or enclosing schema. This is when toddlers learn to contain things by using borders and enclosures. So when you notice your child has an increasing interest to put things inside and outside a container, hide inside boxes, build walls around his toys, and draw borders around a picture, then your child is most likely exploring his containment schema. To support the schema, provide your toddler with various containers like jars, bottles, and even chonklak board. Then you have to prepare loose parts that they can fill the containers with, such as sticks, buttons, coins, and pom-poms. Next is to allow them to use uh, cardboard boxes and shoe boxes to build forts for themselves or dance for their pets. Yeah, Let your child use their imagination. Blocks, connecting tiles, train tracks, balancing beams, sticks, and hula hoops. These are all the things that they can use to form enclosures around their soft toys or animal figurines. They can also use masking tapes to create a blueprint of a zoo with all the areas for each animal. And did you know that making a human face from loose parts is also considered as an activity of containment schema? So kids learn to contain parts of the face inside an enclosure. Yeah, so you can use a plate or a wooden lock like this one as the face and then you can ask your child to use stones or leaves, sticks to make the eyes, eyebrows, nose and mouth. You can use this opportunity to teach your child about emotions as well. To further support your child's exploration, you can take them to visit farms and zoos where the animals are contained inside enclosures and also to the supermarket and let them help you to put the fruits inside the plastic bag, put different things inside the shopping cart and unload the groceries at the checkout counter. And next we have orientation schema. This is when your child is exploring, um, seeing things from different perspectives. Whether they bend their body and look through their legs, they lie on the floor, they climb the sofa, or look very closely to the mirror. Yeah? So a great way to support orientation schema, especially for younger toddlers, is to set up a play tunnel. You can purchase something similar like this one, or just use chairs and blankets to create your own. Crawling has so many benefits for the kids. It helps develop and enhance their balance, cognition, problem-solving skills, and coordination. Next, at around age three or four, yeah, then you can give your child a pair of binoculars and magnifying glass to get a closer perspective to the things they see every day. Your child can use their magnifying glass to see a hair strand, uh, crystals in an ice cube, or marching ants. Yeah, you can also provide them with a kaleidoscope so that they can explore patterns and symmetry. Or you can also give them a three-way mirror so that they can also learn about reflection and symmetry. Pair this with a light table for extra fun. For this schema, I do recommend bringing your child to go outdoors and play in the playground. Let them play with a swing, 
slide, monkey bars, and seesaw. Let your child play with puddles after the rain. They can see their own reflection, use their hand to erase it, or make little ripples by throwing pebbles. Stir the puddle with a stick or throw a leaf to see it float. Just make sure to give your toddler a good bath after playing. Next, we have the transporting schema. This is when your toddler is especially curious to see how things around them travel from one place to another. You can identify the schema if you see your toddler is into moving things, collecting things, and pushing through these. To support the schema, just provide them with various containers such as bags, baskets, and carts for them to put their things in. You can also uh, prepare various scoop, pour, and transfer activities using these materials. Yeah. Then after they're done playing, just ask them to clean their table using a brush and dustpan. This way, they get to transport their rubbish into the rubbish bin. So that's another opportunity to learn. From age two, you can also begin to introduce your child to a strider bike or three-wheeled scooter so that they can learn to travel on their own. Yeah. In addition to this, let your child experience different modes of transportation instead of just observing them. You can go to Anchal and try traveling using a boat or use the cable car to see the place from above or simply ride a pony. The next schema is the connection schema. This is when your child particularly enjoys joining and separating toys or using sticky tapes to make paper chains. For the schema, you can just provide them with toys that can connect or be stacked on top of each other, such as Legos, magnetic tiles, pipes, and so on. Chains, lacing, and threading toys are also great. Jigsaw puzzles and dominoes are also fantastic toys for those above the age of three. Dominoes can be played flat or upright to be toppled. Kids will love to see the chain reaction that will happen once the first domino is toppled. Next, you can also use ribbons, threads, and tapes so that they can make obstacle course. Yeah? And then your child can then pretend to be a spy on a secret mission. Another fun game that your child may love is to make a train by lining up all the dining chairs. Yeah, It's even more fun if you can invite more kids to play along. It will also be exciting for your child to use the MRT or busway. And then after that, you can show them the network map and discuss with them how the routes are interconnected. Next is positioning schema. Children with the positioning schema are fascinated by how things are placed, grouped, and ordered. They are often seen lining up their toys in a certain way and are quite particular with the way objects should be placed. To support the schema, you can give your child various loose parts that can be classified based on its size, color, or shapes. Of course, you also need to provide the containers, like this one, yeah, or masking tape. These tapes are amazing. They can be made into various shapes and colors to be used for sorting. Another way to support the schema is to give them stackable blocks, like rainbow blocks, that they can arrange vertically, starting from the biggest to the smallest. For horizontal ordering, try giving them sequencing puzzles, like knob cylinders and Russian dolls. Shape puzzles are also great. Board games, yeah, for older kids, this is very great because there are so many important math concepts that children can learn from playing this. Yeah, Playing board games can also teach children about taking turns in the right order. Another way you can teach your child about taking turns and order is by bringing them to the playground. Seeing other kids taking their turns and sharing will be a great learning experience for them. Last but not least is transforming schema, which is when children are fascinated with how things change appearance, be it color, shape, or size. When your child likes to mix his food, turn the light switch on and off and watch you as you blow up a balloon, chances are he is exploring the transforming schema. This is why we need to provide them with malleable materials, yeah, such as clay, play-doh, sand, and the tools, of course, to shape them, such as rolling pins, shape cutters, and molds. 
Children with this schema may also enjoy making instant snow or oobleck. Add some animal figurines to it so that it will be more meaningful to them. You can also demonstrate cool science experiments with baking soda and vinegar. Then get your child to explore mixing paints and food coloring. It's fine if the final color that you get is just brown. If you have a light table, you can also let them mix colors using cellophane papers and translucent toys like this one. Young kids, they are also fascinated with shadow. So get them a torchlight and some puppets and let them see how the puppets may appear bigger and smaller than their size. You can also tell stories like Gruffalo's Child to make it more exciting. If you're into baking, then you can get your child to help you mix the ingredients and knead the dough. You can also let them help you prepare juice. To add to that, you can bring them to see the process of making food at restaurants with open kitchens. Take them to see the making of lamia noodles, bread, boba, nitrogen uh, ice cream, or cotton candy. Now we're done with the nine schemas. Now let me share some important notes before I end this session. First is schemas are natural, uncontrollable, and necessary for your child's brain development. So you don't have to rush things or beg them to stop. And next, some children have strong, clear schemas while others are more subtle. Then, schemas can overlap and interconnect, so your child may be exploring more than just one schema at the same time. And last one, schemas are constantly changing and developing over time. That is why toy rotation is very important. Okay, so I hope through this session you can understand more about what's actually going on in your child's mind when they play and provide ways to support them. God bless you!